share a little testimony because I'm also working on something God's working with me on is receiving better, being a better receiver of blessing. Yeah, because I've been seeing like, mm, this is kind of an area that is needing some more help. Um, and so when, when I was thinking about, you know, dreaming big for this year and, and him encouraging me to do that, I was reminded of just a testimony I have from the past that like is one of those few examples that just totally blew my mind. And I don't think I've had it happen a lot, but this really was. Um, at the time... Um, I was, it was when I was in my first marriage and we had just moved to Ohio. We hadn't been there that long. You know, I kind of had left, um, we left Delaware and I had an interior design job. It was my first job out of college and I had worked there for like a year and a half, you know, and, um, I came to, uh, Ohio and couldn't find work in my field because the economy was really bad at that point. It was like 2003. It was not good in Ohio at all. It was pretty good here, but not there. And so I ended up temping at Ohio State and I was basically like a receptionist and um, I was bored out of my mind. I mean, I had just so bored. So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I decided to like change, learn how to type on a new keyboard and like write books and just do whatever I could to keep my mind entertained because <laughs> I was so bored and and so I was also looking up stuff on the internet all the time and like learning about cool places and things just to keep my mind from like completely deteriorating <laughs> from boredom so I was looking up stuff about Hawaii and I'm like man Hawaii looks so cool you know it looks so neat and um I was like you know it would be and, and I wasn't even I didn't even pray I just kind of thought it would be really cool to go there It'd be really neat and that was it and then I, I kid you not, it was probably like a, I don't know if it was a couple days or a week or two weeks or what, but it was not that long. And my dad says to me, cause he's still in Maryland. And he says to me, um, you know, I have a business credit card and I have a whole lot of flyer miles and like points built up. And, and he literally says, um, you know, you could probably use it cause I'm not going to be going anywhere. And he's like, I probably have enough. You could probably go to Hawaii. And I was like, what, what? <laughs> really? And sure enough, he had enough for my husband and I at the time to take two tickets to Hawaii, wow. paid for a four star hotel. Wow. And I'm trying to think what else. Like, I, I think we probably spent maybe a thousand dollars between the tax. We had to pay the tax for the hotel, sure. which was maybe like 400. And then we had to pay maybe a tiny, tiny bit towards the airfare. And then we had to pay, pay for our rental car and like our food. And like, that was it. But I mean, that was like a $6,000 vacation at yeah. least. And we were in um, Kauai for like a week. And so it was, it was absolutely amazing. And I just couldn't believe that God just brought that through when I didn't even ask him for it. It was literally just a like, that would be really nice if thought. <laughs> and I know, I mean, I haven't had that happen. I've had that happen in small ways since then, but not in like a big way like that. That was crazy. And the timing of it was crazy. Yeah. It was just very obvious yes. that it was like God showing me like, hey, um, I heard that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, so he reminded me of that when I was thinking again about my desire to travel and how I said to Gary, it seems very selfish of me to even think about desiring to go to England again, like right now. Like that seems like the most selfish thought I could even have. How could I even like, you know, pray and ask him for that? And then I kind of just felt God saying, I mean, you know, not that that's necessarily going to happen this year or anything, but just, I felt him kind of saying like, you know what, like, remember about that Hawaii thing? Mm -hmm. Can we, can you just be comfortable laying your desires in front of me and just allowing me, you know, to do what I want to do to bless you. Um, so, and then the other thing I wanted to say is, um, when I was attending, um, several years ago, I was attending Burning Heart, which is the house church that's in the, uh, it was in um, Parkville, Maryland. 
Eric. Um, they did a cool session on vision casting. And so that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to kind of do my own little version of what they did because I loved what they did. And basically what they did is they had each one of us sit down and kind of take a couple moments to just ask God and reflect on what are the desires of your heart? Like if there was no barrier to you doing whatever you want to do, like no financial barriers, no logistical barriers, just none of these like selfishness barriers. I mean, obviously like laying everything down that, you know, we're wanting something that God would not be opposed to, you know what I mean? Sure. But assuming we all get that, which I know we do, um, <laughs> you know, just what, if you could do anything as a life purpose or like a goal that you would like to achieve, and it can be more than one, like what would they be? Like what would, what would the top two be? What would the top three be? And then writing them down. Um, and I remember at the time, I actually kind of wish I still had written down, like I don't remember what I wrote down, but I remember there were pretty, pretty big things that came out of that. And, but I also know that um, we talked about the power of putting those, writing them down and committing them and letting other people know what they are and having sort of accountability mm -hmm. and prayer support for them mm -hmm. because we, we know we can't accomplish them on our own if they're God-sized, right. you know, dreams and desires but he can accomplish them, but we still have to be willing to acknowledge what they are and commit to them being a desire of our heart and commit some of our focus to them because, you know, nothing that we do is going to happen without um, it getting some focus and some thought. And I would say the next part of it would be um, you know, once you write down, you know what it is, you know, you also go back and you look at, you know, prophetic words that you've received, um, looking at life verses, scriptures that are your life verses and looking at those things and like, how do those line up? Do they line up with that or not? And I mean, if there's like a disconnect, then that might be something to just pray into with the Lord for a while. But if they line up, you know, I would see that as a confirmation, a big confirmation that other people have spoken that in as well and seen that and affirmed that. And then I would say, aside from just doing this as kind of a cool, fun thing to do at the beginning of the year, which it totally is, but I mean, this isn't just for this year. Is there a piece of this that I'm supposed to look at and pursue? Um, but, you know, I think when you're in church family with people, people you're close to, um, you know, he has, um, a lot, I don't know, a lot of people have said that there's, there's a book in heaven for each one of us and that there's a, there's a destiny that he has written for each one of us. And I know that something that's been in my mind lately is I don't want to have fear or something else stand in the way of me fulfilling the purposes that he's called me to. And I don't want to get to heaven and see that like, wow, right. <laughs> he had this and this for me and it was there for me, but I didn't have the courage or the determination or the focus to just go even give it a try because I can't accomplish it without him anyway. But if I don't even try, then that would be a, a great disappointment that I just don't want to have. And I wouldn't want my friends or my brothers and sisters in Christ to have that either. So I feel like there's a sense of accountability in helping one another and encouraging one another, which I think happens organically in our group anyway with all of us. But just to be more um, deliberate and intentional about it, might be a good a good thing so that 
is um, what I'm thinking here. And let me look at a couple scriptures. Okay, so I'm going to read. This is um, from Habakkuk 2. Um, I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart, and I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved, which means also like corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets, that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens towards the goal, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith. Okay. And then we've got, these are just, just some scriptures to kind of let your heart feed on as we think about, as we think about this. So this is Proverbs 24, 27. Prepare your work outside and make it ready for yourself in the field. Afterwards, then build your house. So you want your fields to be ready. You want the ground to be ready so that you can, because that's your income, that's your harvest. That's, um, you can't build your house without your income. So you have all of that in line and then you build the house, which is kind of like your investment for the place for you to live and reside. So it's just about being deliberate and being, um, open to planning things in a way that is um, wise. This one is Psalm 20. Verse four, may he grant you your desire, your heart's desire and fulfill all your counsel. It also says, or purpose. We will sing for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. And a little bit further down in verse 7, it has um, a verse that I really like to remember. Some boast in chariots and some in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. So yes, we do the wise things, we plan, we look at um, our resources but we remember that it's not in the things of man, the strength of man. It's, it's, in the, uh, it's in God that we have our strength. But the first part of this is him granting us our heart's desire and fulfilling our, him fulfilling our purpose. Uh, Psalm 37. Verse uh, 4, which is sim similar, but a little different. And this one you probably heard before. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. Um, and verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who carries out wicked, wicked schemes. So don't be discouraged when you see the wicked prosper, but commit your ways to the Lord and trust in him. But it is, this one is conditional, delight yourself in the Lord. So the Lord is the, the primary focus. And back to Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Now, it doesn't say that we will establish our plans. It says your plans will be established. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Hmm. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. By loving kindness and truth, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. 
When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. The mind of a man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So that's through verse 9. So we're going to go through the first part of this, which is just to sit for a minute and um, just to spend some quiet time with the Lord and write down what would be that biggest thing that if you could accomplish, I would say start with the biggest one. What would be the biggest desire of your heart if you had no limits whatsoever to accomplish or, or do or be? Um, in your in your lifetime, what would that look like? And then we'll kind of and if there's you know whatever he gives you, I mean if there's key words like whatever it is, you know, just be flexible with him. My other question to all of you is: Does it feel big enough? Does it feel too big? If it doesn't feel too big, it's not big enough. Because I was going to say that. It should feel pretty big. Like, it should feel like a God-sized... Like, a, I need God to do this thing. Or else you need to make it bigger with him. Is what I would say. Like, to stretch it to the point that it's like, okay, this is big enough that I'm definitely going to need his help. Or it probably won't happen. sound simple but to me there are places where I feel stuck yeah and they, they, yeah. the only person that can help is God yeah 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 that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> so the other things I was going to share there's just a couple scriptures um, I wanted to share um, and then we can uh, just kind of discuss if you want if you don't want, it's totally fine. Okay. So, so yeah. So what I was getting for the steps kind of for this is, um, you know, dreaming with God is this first step. And like a lot of us have been doing that maybe with it, without even like really thinking about it or, you know, intentionally doing it. But it's like always kind of that subconscious, just like me, like I'd love to go to Hawaii. Um, so dreaming with God and then the second part of it that I would recommend doing if you're not already doing it, which would be writing down, you know, your life, um, any life scriptures that God's given you. If you don't have a couple of scriptures that you feel like are life verses, I would start with that and then work on that. Um, and then by that, I mean, I just mean ones that feel especially they resonate with you deeply. You definitely have them memorized because those are the ones you definitely want to have memorized if you don't have trouble memorizing other ones, which I do. Um, and I don't even know if I still have those memorized, so I need to work on that. Um, but also, you know, the other one would be, um, you know, looking at, you know, writing down prophetic words you've received, the ones that you've tested, the ones that you feel um, God has confirmed in your heart about your life or your, your calling, um, to have those, even if they're recordings, whatever they are, or you don't have them recorded, but you kind of vaguely remember. Like, I literally would try, and I have done this in the past, I would, I would write them down in a summary format, just somewhere in a journal, you know, where you can see them all, even if it's just summarized, you can see what, you know, the keywords of them are, um, so that you can review them periodically with the Lord. Um, and I mean, at least annually, at least, you know, just to kind of be, 
you know, when you set a course and you're going somewhere, you got to check your coordinates every now and then. You've got to look at your map and your compass and say, okay, am I still in alignment with this? Am I, did I make a wrong turn? How do I get back to where I need to be? How do I recalibrate? Um, so I think, you know, each year it's good to just do like a mental, spiritual check-in to recalibrate. And then the other thing before I get into the next part is, um, so looking at, you know, how this fits in with those life verses, with those prophetic, those key prophetic words that have been spoken. Um, and then also I think it's really important to, and we'll talk about this a little bit more if you guys want to share anything, you don't have to, but if you want to share them, we'll give examples. But I think it's really important when you have something you're trying to focus on, you know, you're trying to actually want to achieve this with the Lord, it's important to visualize it or imagine it happening. What does it look like? What would it look like if this happened? And to me, that's, um, that's, a, that's a way that we meditate with the Lord. We meditate with him. What would it look like if this actually happened? What would I, who would I look like if this was actually completed? Who would I have to be? for this to be completed? What's different in me? What would have to be different in me from where I am right now? Like what, you know? Um, So that's where you are making it plain. Like when we talked about writing down the vision and making it plain so that it can be run with, that's where it's, um, because it talks about, in the Bible it talks about, you know, take every thought captive. And this is a way of taking good thoughts captive and saying, okay, this isn't just going to be a fleeting thought. I'm going to be very deliberate and focused on this. Think about it. I'm going to, to ask God to show me what would it look like, um, to show me things about it, to pray into it, to dream into it with him. And we can do that periodically at different points in life to help us. Um, because you know, I, I was, we were listening to something, I can't remember what it was, we were listening to something today or the other day, and somebody was talking about praying for, um, I think it was Jamie Galloway, he was talking about praying for healing for people, and he was saying, you know, as somebody with a seeing gift, who talked about using your imagination, and he was talking about, you know, if he's praying for somebody's knee, he's going to visualize the changes that he's asking God to make. And again, I mean, it can sound kind of hokey, but like, it's, it's not hokey. It's, it's, you know, faith is the substance of the things that are unseen. So it's basically just taking hold of, um, it's, it's a way of using your faith. So, um, so I would encourage you to do that. And then the last step that I have is to contend. So we're going to go to first Timothy. 118. And it says, This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight, keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. So keeping faith and a good conscience. So that's talking about contending for the words that were spoken. Um, And then I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. I'm going to back up to 16 just to give you more context. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form or appearance of evil. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. 
So that just goes to speak to testing, testing all of the words, testing everything. Um, but that the peace of God sanctifies us and preserves us. And that he is the one who calls us and brings things to pass in our lives. And then also to just remember not to be a, not to be discouraged by um, what may appear to be small beginnings, uh, because David tended sheep for a long time, even after he was given the word that he was going to be the king. It did not happen the next day. It was years of still being a shepherd, and still being kind of the low guy on the totem pole before, and then once he did start to see some movement he was you know chased around right and um his life was at risk more more so than ever so there's there's usually going to be um opposition and i know we all kind of know this but typically typically when you get an amazing prophetic word it, it it probably means that you need it at that moment because you're about ready to get a lot of discouragement and that God's trying to help you get through that discouragement. And I think sometimes people get confused because like, well, I just got this amazing prophetic word and then things went more south than they could have been before I got the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the word didn't do that. Mm -hmm. The word came because God knew that was coming right. and it was his kindness and his goodness so that we would not lose heart. Mm -hmm. We would not despair because he knows how discouraging some of this stuff can be for us. Um, and the other thing is don't force it. Whatever it is, don't force it. Because, you know, if I have a word that I'm going to, which I do not have, that I'm going to be an actress in Hollywood, if I decide to quit my job tomorrow and move to Hollywood, and I don't have any confirmations from the Lord. I don't have any leadings from the Spirit. I just, I got the word yesterday and I'm going to make it happen today. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I heard someone say there's a difference between God's yes and God's go. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, look at Joseph. You know, he had the dream that the that his brothers and sisters, that his brothers were going to bow down to him. He had these dreams that he was going to be in rulership, but yet he had to go through quite a process mm -hmm. to become that ruler and to be able to to um, be able to steward. And he probably went through more of a process than anybody than anybody really. Most of the people in scripture, I would say, because his calling and his prophetic word was so big that his process was just as big. It was like 19 or 22 years, wasn't it? it yeah, it was really long. It was a really long time. Um, so I think that, you know, don't to not be discouraged, but also to not force it. Um, Psalm 127. So much good stuff in the Psalms. many nuggets <clears throat> unless the Lord builds the house they labor in vain who build it unless the Lord guards the city the watchman keeps awake in vain it is vain I'm gonna say or pointless for you to rise up early to retire late to eat the bread of painful labors for he who gives to his beloved even in his sleep Sorry, for he gives to his beloved, even in his sleep. Behold, children are a gift from the Lord. But anyway, the point of that is, you know, that the Lord is the one that builds the house. And then last but not least, Jeremiah 1, verse 12. And this right before this is when he says, um, what do you see? And he says, I see the rod of an almond tree. Just to give you the context. So verse 12 says, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. So that's just, again, his promise that he watches over his words to perform them. So that 
we are in partnership with him, we can't, um, we can't accomplish those things without him. We, it won't have the same fruit if we try to accomplish it without him, I guess is the better way to say it. Um, but if we accomplish it with, with him, then it will have the fruit that he has intended. It'll have the kingdom impact that he intended. Mm -hmm.